What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that makes it easy to create human characters inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna check out the add-on Human Generator. So this add-on makes it really easy to create different human characters inside of Blender. Um, it's actually one of the most intuitive ways of creating this kind of characters I've ever seen outside of like a video game or something like that. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to use. So first things first, you can get that from the link in the notes down below. So this is a paid add-on, but it is a super feature packed add-on that I think is really cool. Um, I will note that this is an affiliate link, um, but there's two licenses. There's either the personal or portfolio license, and then there's the commercial license. So they both have the same features and content. It's just one is licensed for commercial use where one is licensed for uh, personal portfolio and educational use. All right, so in to install the add-on, so when you first purchase the add-on, you're gonna lit get a list of different content packs that you can download as well as the add-on itself. And so what you're gonna wanna do, and there's actually a page here, which I will link to in the notes down below that walks you through exactly how you do this, but you wanna start by installing the add-on through your preferences, then Inside of your preferences, there's gonna be a function right here where you set a folder to install the content packs. And then you select the content packs and you install them. So it's pretty easy to follow along with. You can just follow these instructions right here. And so then when you have that installed in Blender, um, first off, it's gonna look something like it's gonna look something like this. Note that there's also an option in here for future installing content packs. I'm not sure how many of those are available right now. I haven't seen a ton floating around out there, but in the future, there'll probably be more content packs with different clothes and poses and other things like that. So keep an eye out for that. But for right now, let's take a look at the base functions. So first things first, in order to run this, you're gonna tap the N key to get the menu off to the side. And then there's just a window here for human gen or H-U-M-G-E-N. And so the first thing you need to do is you need to add a human. And so um, actually the very first time you open this up, it's gonna pop up a little window with a tutorial. Um, if you wanna access that again, you can just click on the gears right here and click on the open tutorial. But the cool thing about this is this is all built in to Blender. So you can actually see um, the different steps in here and you can follow along. So this is gonna show you exactly how to use this add-on. So the support and documentation for this add-on is excellent. It's really gonna kind of walk you through how to create these things. There's also a Discord that you can join if you have any specific questions. So um, you can access this tutorial inside of Blender. But let's say, for example, that we wanted to just add a human. So we're just gonna add a starting human. I'm gonna move Bonnie off to the side over here and she can just rotate around and watch what we're doing. So to start off, you can click on this option right here to select a human. Notice that there are options both for male and for female characters in here. So we'll pick a male character and bring that in. And these are all kind of, you can see these have different facial structures in here, but you can start with kind of a template and then we're going to be able to customize. So I'm just gonna pick one of these and bring it in. You're gonna start just by clicking on the button for generate new human. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a human rig over here. And you're gonna have a bunch of different options for things that you can adjust. So if we look at this, the first thing we can do is we can come in here and we can adjust things like how muscular a person is, if they're overweight, um, as well as if they're skinny, if they're less skinny. You can adjust all of that with sliders in here. You can also randomize, which can be kind of fun. So you can randomize your different settings in here in order to get different kinds of characters. So we'll go ahead and go with this one for right now. Notice how there's an option in here for individual scaling as well. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to adjust the size of individual things, right? So I can adjust the head, the neck, the shoulders, all those different pieces individually as well. So just like this. So one thing to note on this is there is a button up here that allows you to make the human model experimental. So when you make the model experimental, what that does is that allows you to go beyond the settings that are typically allowed in here. So for example, you can see how instead of being able to go to one, I can go to two on the muscular settings. But you have to be a little bit careful because then you can lose the like realistic proportions. So for example, this is a much more cartoony look 
that's in here. So you can use that in order to adjust this in here. However, um, just, just be kind of careful with your settings, um, but you can definitely play around with that in order to try to get different results. You can also toggle it back to normal just by um, unchecking the little button right here for experimental. And so in addition to being able to set the body composition, you can also set things like heights. So for example, if I wanted this to be a six foot character, I can just move this up in order to make this person six foot, but you can adjust how tall or short the character is right here. So you can also adjust the facial structure. And so you can do that by coming in here and adjusting each one of these objects, either independently or all above by using the randomize all function right here. But notice how you can adjust forehead size, you can adjust temple size, a lot of things having to do with this character's actual like facial structure. You can adjust height of eyes, just all the different things that would go into creating a character. So it's a lot of fun just to kind of play around with. You can randomize each one of these just by clicking on the individual settings as well. So you can also mess around with some preset variations down below as well. So the skin function is really cool because the skin in here actually first off gives you a number of different texture sets that you can start with. So for example, you can start with like a dark skin, you can start with a medium or light skin as well. Um, and those come not only in 4K, but there's also a library in here of 8K textures, which are going to be really detailed when it comes to the skin. So if I was to bring in an 8K texture and then kind of zoom in on it, you can see that this is going to give you a really high resolution skin texture inside of your model. So I'm going to drop this down to 4K in this case, but then you can also adjust different skin settings in here. So for example, you can adjust the skin tone. You can see how as you adjust the slider, it gets lighter and darker. You can also adjust how much redness and saturation is in the skin as well. So you also get control over things like light and dark areas. And so you can use the light and dark areas to add some detail to areas like the space around the eye in your model. You can also adjust if the model has freckles on their skin and if you want them to have like skin splotches. And the interesting thing with this is you can start simulating age as well. So like for example, if we go down to the age function, you can add wrinkles to the skin and some skin sagging in here as well. So you can adjust this to make your model look younger or older. So the eyes function is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. It gives you control over the eyes and you can adjust things like the iris color in here as well as the sclera, which I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's basically the value for the whites of the eyes. So if you do want to add a little bit of tint in there, you can definitely do that. You need to be a little careful. It kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Um, you can kind of over exaggerate those things if you decide that you want to do that, or you can just go with something more typical, maybe something like this. So you can also adjust the eyebrow presets. Notice with the eyebrow presets right now, the children are hidden. And what that means is that means for performance's sake, um, it's not showing all the extra edges that are in here for the eyebrows. So for a performance standpoint, you can toggle this off right now just to kind of preview the way things are going to look. So there's also a ton of different hair presets that are in here, which are really cool. So you can come in here and you can just set like, um, really any of these looks. So you can adjust these hair presets. One thing to note about this, right now we're just in material preview mode. So these are getting placed in here as particles, but they're actually gonna show up if we were to jump over into, let me add a light real quick. And this is not the proper way to light something like this. You would want multiple lights in here, but just to preview the hair, this is gonna work fine. So if you really wanna see the hair, you're gonna to wanna to jump over into cycles because this hair is in here as a, um, as a particle system. So um, even though it doesn't show up in EV, it will show up in cycles when you do your final render. So your rendering would actually have thicker hair than your preview, um, and that's all trying to keep the performance manageable in here. So there's also, for the males, the option to add facial hair 
as well. So you can pick like beards, mustaches, other things like that. And then those are gonna be adjustable to a certain degree as well. And then down below, you also have options to adjust the things like hair length. Now I will note, you probably wanna jump back into material preview mode when you start making these changes so you can see them without having to, so you can see them without having to actually render this. You can adjust those in a more fine way under your hair length. And then you can also adjust the lightness of your hair material. So to actually see any of those changes, you are gonna to have to jump back into rendered mode because it is changing the color of particles, which you're only gonna see if you jump over into the actual rendered version of your model in cycles. And so once you're done with this, what you would do is you would just click on the button for finish creation phase and click on click to confirm. What that's going to do is that's going to take you out of creation phase and into the more editing phase. So that's going to give you more control over this human. And so real quick, I want to take a look at a female model as well, mostly to look at some, some of the stuff you can do with the hair. So we're just going to jump over into a new model real quick. We're going to add a new character and I'm just going to run through this really fast and we're really going to get into the hair settings once I set this character up. And then there's a number of different female hairstyles in here as well. So specifically, I wanted to look at the longer hair right here because of one of the cool things you can do with that. So what you can do is you can add that hair in here, but then if you jump over into particle edit mode like this, you can actually adjust the direction that that hair goes inside of particle edit mode. So it actually gives you control over the way the hair is gonna fall on the character by letting you adjust the different particles that are in here. So if that's something that you want to do, you get a lot of control over this inside of this add-on. So then you can jump back into object mode and just kind of see what you did right here. And there's some other things that you can just adjust in here and well, like hair length, for example. And so we'll render this out in a minute, just so you can get kind of an idea of what that hair does. But first off, let's finish our creation phase on this model and we can start adding things like different poses, clothes, other things like that. I mean, the, the amount of stuff in this add-on is crazy. All right, so now we're out of the creation phase and into the next phase, which is the phase where you can add the different things like clothing. And so for example, let's say we wanted to add clothing. You can click in here and and there's a number of different clothing that sets that are in here that you can bring in to your model. So for example, there's like a pant, there's a pantsuit, there's a relaxed, there's a bunch of different options in here. So you can add clothes. In the future, I think there might be the ability to bring some more in. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work, but I'm really excited to see where that goes. But there's also different footwear in here. So you could pick like dress shoes or, so there's options for like dress clothes, more casual clothes, other things like that. In addition, there's also different poses and expressions. So for example, if we look at this, there's a library of different poses. So for example, there's the walking pose. So that's gonna put them in a walking pose. There's the standing and looking up. There's just a bunch of different poses that are in here. And the cool thing about this is you can also jump over into pose mode and you can adjust the bones in here. So like for example, if I was to rotate this up and this has all the IK rigging inside of it. And what that means is that means when you move something like this arm, for example, the bones upstream of it are going to adjust as well. So adding things like movements can be fairly easy. Um, I don't wanna to get too far into that right now, but just note that that option is in there. You can also do things like adjusting where the eyes are looking. So notice how as I move this rig around, the eyes are actually tied to the rig. And so you can make your model actually look at different things. And then let's jump back into object mode. In addition to this, there's also different expressions that you can load. So for example, you could load different smiles. You could load like a disgusted look. There's a bunch of different looks that are kind of pre-built in here that you can use. That one's a little terrifying, but fairly accurate. Um, and so you can also combine different settings down here below. So um, to simulate different facial expressions. So for example, I can adjust how much this rig is smiling by adjusting the cheeky smile setting. And so what you could do, notice is you, these are keyframeable. So what you could do is you can keyframe this right here 
and then let's say 30 frames in, you wanted this person to have a smile, you could keyframe that like this, and then you could actually animate that person smiling inside of your model. And maybe you'd want this to be a little bit faster, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. And so then finally, let's go ahead and let's render this out just to get an idea of what this add-on is capable of. So I'm just gonna set up a real quick render, maybe something like this. And one thing we wanna make sure that we do when we render this is we do wanna make sure that we've turned on denoising. So denoising is really going to affect the result that we're gonna get and usually I put it on optics. So now I'm gonna let this render out and then we can come back and we can take a look at the result once it's done. All right, so you can see how for our final render, this is an absolutely fantastic result for the amount of work that I actually put into it. This looks amazing. So there's a lot of interesting things we can do with this. There's a lot to unpack. So if you're interested in talking about this add-on more, leave a comment down below and let me know. So you can check out this add-on at the link in the notes down below. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this add-on. I'm super excited to play around with it more in the future. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Video. Thanks guys.